your prior form of the ladies working dog group. Are you feeling stuck with your gun dog training? Trust me, you're not alone and that's exactly why you need to be here. Every week, we'll bring you the best tips and hacks to make training your gun dog easy peasy. We'll keep it straightforward, no fuss, just actionable guidance that you can put straight to use. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of Found It, Fetched It. This week, we're going back to our archives to an episode we put together four years ago now. This episode is all about how to get your dog ready for fireworks evening. Fireworks can be something that can be incredibly stressful for dogs, and especially with the fact that for many areas, these fireworks will now start long before the actual evening itself. It used to be that you'd only hear fireworks on the 5th of November, but now we get to hear them way before Halloween, and for many dogs, this can be incredibly frightening. You may see on social media posts things like, it's the same as shot, but it isn't the same as shot. It's not just bonfire night that we hear this now, we also hear it on New Year's Eve, people's weddings, and other huge events. So get out a notepad, get a pen, and start taking some information from this fabulous episode where we talk all about how you can get your dog prepared. Welcome to this video on how to manage your dog through fireworks. Please welcome to the screen, to the group, the Ladies Working Dog Group Featured Experts, or some of the Ladies Working Dog Group Featured Experts. We are going to cover in this short video how to manage your dog around fireworks. Now, it's only a short amount of time until bonfire night and for many of you this whole season this whole section of time is really worrying because you're very concerned about what your dog's going to respond to how your dog is going to feel and certainly if your dog has got situations or got problems already it's even more worrying for you so ladies thank you all for coming i've got on the call with me tonight emma stevens jl cock abby reed Gemma martin and claire denya they are going to impart to us their absolute wisdom around this topic. Who would like to start with, what are the signs that people should be looking for to say that the dog is having a challenge, a bit of an issue with fireworks? What, are they all running around the room frantically or is it different things that you should be looking for that may be quite noticeable or quite, quite not noticeable? If I say a few that I had with my dog and then the others could all share things they've seen personally because I think it's so variable from dog to dog so when Indy was fearful she would literally freeze and curl up in a ball and would wet herself which is horrendous because you didn't if you didn't know her you would think she was just sleeping and that then started becoming shaking. And I didn't know that she had wet herself until she got up when it had finished because she didn't move. And then she started shaking. And then as the, because it got progressively worse over a few weeks because we had this time period where fireworks are going off constantly. From that, it started with vocalization as well. So frantically barking at the air indoors like at the ceiling but the initial things were very subtle and I was like oh that's strange Indy's lined up and not moving and there's all this sound outside and she was actually traumatized and didn't move. Yeah and I think that's so important to show that there, there is this massive that it's very similar to the period uh, to the pyramid of aggression that you can you do get this pyramid of, of fear as well that it's the signs in a real early stage are very subtle it can be lip licking it can be going and standing in a corner it can be lying down and, and not moving at all which to a lot of owners whale eyes and all of that sort of stuff taking themselves off into the bed and things like that and if you don't if you didn't know that dog you would think oh it's just taking itself off into his bed it's just a bit tired or oh it's just in a deep sleep it's just not moved or and and loads of different kind of reasons that you put to this dog that actually it isn't scared it's just having an off day or something like that and then what happens is if those behaviors are ignored the same as aggression if aggression's ignored you go up this level and, and it gets a bit worse and then up this level and it gets a bit worse and then you've got obviously what Claire said right at the end which was this vocalization just at thin air mm -hmm. because almost all of those underneath haven't been with fear it's slightly different because it's not especially with 
firework night it's not something that you can stop and jump in on and prevent so those behaviors have effectively been ignored because of the situation that they're in not because an owner's not done something about it but you get this kind of escalation up to the point where you're right up here it's, it's very difficult to get them to to recover and calm back down again yeah the cortisol just keeps getting flooded in doesn't it over and over again each time to the point that they can't cope with it and they spill over into yeah, work. And how long it takes a dog, a dog's adrenaline and everything to come down you're talking days when mm. the fireworks are repeating night after night for a progressive mm. time your life and sometimes within a night so you'll have one little flurry of fireworks and then they'll start to relax thinking it's ended and then you'll have another and it's quite unpredictable isn't it like depending on because you don't know what all your neighbors are going to do so yeah. you don't know when they're all going to happen either yeah and you're just like just filling this bucket up continuously until to the point where it overflows and then on top of like you're going up this kind of pyramid of scale of, of their behavior and usually lots of people don't do anything or realize their dog is stressed until they're at a point where they're almost screaming in your face I'm really stressed about this because the subtle signs aren't necessarily picked up on and some dogs will even become destructive won't they you know through yeah. it they will destroy the house if they're left alone <laughs> Um, through fear you know it, it you've got to think how traumatized a dog must be to be in that state of mind to do those sorts of things one of the other signs as well excessive drinking some dogs tend to yeah. stop when they're stressed that's what i was gonna say and pant a lot so what nova did she buried her head i could see her body going she was really her heart rate was up very fast this was quite an ex extreme reaction to first instant but then she just drank so much and I guess part of it is biological because she's been panting so much and that that's warming her she needs to drink to cool and she's been losing all the energy sorry electrolytes whatever it is but I think also sometimes it is just yeah, a bit of a desperate thing to do anything to do I'll drink the water I don't know what else to do with myself kind of thing yeah it's almost bordering on that destructive thing they'll go and do something just to be doing something rather than if you get stressed some people keep busy and some people sit and don't do anything well, dogs often self-harm when they're afraid anxious or in pain but with fear with fireworks so excessive licking of themselves to the point that they'll lick themselves raw or nibble nibble themselves raw indy will pull the pads off of their paws literally pull them Bless her heart. Pads off and she used to have laser treatment to help the <coughs> process. I'm touching wood. We've been good for two years. We don't have these problems anymore. <laughs> I, I, I once heard someone say this because, like, in the same way that human self-harms, you get a small high, you get a bit of endorphin, which can counteract how afraid they are and the adrenaline and the cortisol from the pain because your body releases it in response to the different the different neurons that deal with pain as well if your pain through fear it's a very different one to actual physical pain yeah so what, so what it trying almost, to that. yeah so what it almost does is it numb your fear pain because you've induced actual pain as well so by inducing self-harm you take away the fear in, in the brain it's very odd how it actually works but the dog's almost self-harming to relieve the fear pain because it's a different process in the brain. If you've got a dog that's had previous behaviour issues like resource guarding, separation anxiety, all of those sorts of stuff, they yeah, can yeah. be like re-triggered by a stressful event. You may be actually over resource guarding and your dog hasn't resource guarded anything for a long time and it's been fine. And then a stressful event will redirect to a different to a behaviour avenue that they, they previously had as well. So Especially if they've decided that their new den is their only safe space and then you go and try and get them out to make them go to the toilet. You've got me all worried with fireworks. <laughs> or, or Joe, you have a dog like my Brock, who the problem I had with fireworks is he would be scrabbling at the back door to run out and look into the sky. But mine do. Find the birds. Why is it that fireworks cause an issue for dogs? Obviously, we can't know exactly because we're not inside the dog's brain. But I think the most commonly accepted theory is that it's the pitch of it is very unique and often very high, as well as being very loud, which is something that isn't necessarily familiar to dogs. As they're being raised, they're getting used to loads of different sights and sounds around your house and around their normal walks. They're not getting bombarded with these noises. And also visual. I know a lot of dogs that the visual part of fireworks is incredibly um, unsettling to them as well. 
and that combo together as well as it happening at night time where I think a lot of dogs are less confident anyway because they're not used to being out at night time we generally don't often some people do but in general that's not so common and I think it's unexpected and often it comes on so suddenly and I think it's a shock and you get if you're not careful you can get something called single event learning where a dog's afraid of something straight away and then it's very difficult to unravel that and the problem with fireworks is they go on and on. I think it is it's the it's more the the actual time of the day that it happens because yeah. most of us try our utmost hardest to have that lovely off switch when we settle down at night and shut the curtains and all nice and chill and you've got all of your dogs in this calm state and then suddenly this no noise with flashing lights and sizzling and pictures and things goes off and they've got no real attachment to any rhyme or reason for it occurring and obviously we as humans know that it's firework night or it's coming up to firework night and then they also have this kind of time of year where they have a break from it so you, you have firework night and then or it sometimes even starts from halloween you have halloween and then you have a gap and then it's firework night and then a gap and then it's christmas and then a gap and then it's new year and then you're almost coming into that spring summer where the light disappears and it goes all light again so what you can also run the risk of is, is a dog being actually scared of the dark because they associate the dark with fireworks and this yeah. loud noises and things like that rather than actually it just being firework night and i think it can create other noise phobias as well as a, a fear of the dark for example one of our dogs is afraid of fireworks i won't i can go through if you want but the situation happened that was not very well controlled or, or I expected and then last season I took her beating for the first time and she was just afraid of the flag I'd never thought I don't think she would have normally been afraid of a flag but it was that snapping noise when people started making that snapping noise she did exactly that same oh my god what is that noise and where it's coming from and she'd become sensitized to things that she wasn't expecting I think it's, it's it's not related to like I know lots of clients have come to me and said the dog's scared of fireworks but they're not scared of thunderstorms and mm -hmm. you've got to understand the build up to a storm in the atmosphere a dog can sense that so mm -hmm. they can almost sort of prepare themselves for something happening whereas a so a thunder and lightning storm can be sometimes slightly different but you can create from being scared of fireworks being scared of storms as well so it's a whole kind of mix of incorrect association from the dog's point of view because they've got nothing else to associate it to. And does it help or do, I suppose for example if you're a dog living in a family or and with young children you have they get overly excited about it all as well so they a child's reaction once they understand what a firework is to almost go off the other end where they're screaming they're running around they're flapping at the windows does the whole heightened atmosphere affect the dog? I think it can do probably depends on the dog but certainly another factor to it all i think as well we touched on trauma just now and jay said that something had happened with her dog sometimes the trauma isn't even related to fireworks or to sound a lot of people know my story with indy that she was attacked by a dog and she had a, a breakdown that resulted in sound sensitivity which extended to fireworks gunshots car doors, buses, air brakes, you name it, anything that resembled. So sometimes I think we try and pin a dog's fear on something and the trauma that they've experienced could be anything, it could be change of heart, something completely unrelated to that, but it develops into a fear and also looking at it from a perspective that it could be a physical thing as well dogs have much more sensitive hearing than us and if dogs are in pain some dogs with arthritis some dogs if they've got ear infections we can become more sensitive to sound when things like that are going on and i think breed specific as well is is really important some dogs uh, I, I have a lot of people that say to me oh you've got gun dogs you'll be fine on firework night and that's not necessarily a correct correlation of just because i have been gun dogs and they go and stand on a peg and have a gun fired over the top of them doesn't necessarily mean that firework night is, is going to be a breeze for me I've got dogs in, in in the kennels that we have to bring in at firework night because they can't cope in the outdoor kennels with the echoes and the acoustics of the kennels with the bangs going off and stuff so it's some dogs I know 
gun dogs in particular are very sensitive dogs um and i think that's partly the the reason and, and collies as well in, in fact quite a lot of working breeds um can be very sensitive and i think uh, personalities as well have to be taken into consideration of then also then how you overcome or channel that firework nights or those loud noises in into training and into if you need to do desensitization programs into that as well it's, it's taking in the personality of the dog into account as well yeah. so if you've got a young dog or you've got a puppy <clears throat> and you haven't had an issue with fireworks or with bonfire knife how can you make sure that your dog because you said jay about a dog that suddenly had an issue with it mm. can you be that you do work ahead of time in order to get your dog ready to cope yeah. with different sounds yeah when we breed litters we play the noise to them when they're in the nest because that's when they're they've got mum they've got all the pheromones that mum gives off that basically is helping them to deal obviously that there, there are periods within the time they're in the nest where they all become a bit more sensitive and you would avoid those periods but um, broadly speaking they're, they're quite receptive to learning new sounds we play the sounds of all sorts of different things to them when we have puppies on the ground but when you get your pup home it'll be good it's good to just play sounds of traffic sounds of thunderstorms sounds of gunshots sounds of fireworks quietly so they're there in the background but they're not loud enough to cause any kind of shock or fear a reaction that could be negative and then you gradually build the volume and then they become just a familiar sound, like I was saying. And then when it happens for real, it's still going to be noisier and they're still going to, oh, what's that? But part of their brain will, will find that sound itself more familiar and be able to put it into context and understand it more quickly and it not be scary. And yeah, the dog we had, she was, I don't know if people have heard of fear periods, but there's a lot of debate about if they exist, when they exist, what times they exist. But um, working with lots of puppies, there's definitely every puppy goes for a, a point where it becomes more sensitive to certainly new things. And we had a, our dog was at that age and we were in the garden uh, with a bonfire and we didn't realise it was Diwali because we don't celebrate Diwali. And a house two doors down just let out the biggest um, firework sequence literally right behind us. And the worst thing was not only did that terrify the dog in the moment, but then she ran in the house and then we were all outside. So she then felt she needed to run back out to get us because we hadn't been able to get in time. And that's it happened once. And I've spent the, the next two and a half years working on it. <laughs> it's just, it's much better, but it's very difficult. So we get them when they're young, definitely. <laughs> uh, do, do a proactive plan to make fireworks not scary. There is an app that I have on my phone, which I recommend to puppy owners. It's called Pup School. I don't know if you've heard of it. And um, they've got a sound part on that app. So you can have it on your phone so you can play it in the garden. But I also have these discs that I recommend people. Sound therapy for dogs, which I ordered from Amazon. And this one here is scary noises. I think the idea is they're not meant to be scary. And the other one is specifically for gun dogs. So it's everything they might come across on a shoot from tractors and backfiring to birds and to things like the flags, because mm. as you touched on Jay earlier, some dogs, the sound thing really does travel and gunshots. So they're quite good things to have in the house to play on the build up as well. Like I tend to, if somebody's got a dog that, is sound sensitive i would tell them to start prepping in the summer don't wait until the end of the summer september october and then go oh no it's nearly fireworks season again i'd better do something you, you, you need months if you're going to work with these size yeah. you've got to plan for it so obviously we haven't gone months now we've got a week what can you do then so we've thought of a, a way of being proactive when we've got more time if we haven't got more time, what things can we be doing to make the night easier for all dogs? I think the main thing I would say is that you almost want the whole evening to be what I would call a non-event. So a non-event for the dog. So it's not something that they need to feel worked up about. So I think if you're rushing around the, the night of firework night, trying to sort out a bed for them and, and get everything ready, the dog's going to know something different is occurring and changing. So if you've not got the weeks to get ready from a desensitization to the actual noise point of view, you still have the weeks to get ready 
currently in the house. So things like adaptive plugins or pheromone plugins, they can work for up to, you want to be plugging them in between six and four weeks before a stressful event of some description. If you know your dog's already getting stressed by something and you can play those noises at very low volume and start increasing them depending on how the dog is obviously responding to it. But you want to be trying as much as you can. If you know that your dog is going to be stressed by it, that you want to be saying, like Claire said, in the, in the summer really, is where you want to be prepping your dog for it. But the fact that we've got a few weeks, the main thing is, as I would say, start walking them at night or spending a bit of time in the garden playing with them, like just in in the dark, take them outside while we've not got fireworks going on, take them out and feed them outside in the dark. So they're just at least used to the dark. So if you end up walking and you're caught out and there is a firework that goes off, you've only got the actual firework to deal with rather than the fact that they're not used to being out in the dark and there's fireworks as well. So I've told all of my clients recently, a couple of times a week, start walking them out in the dark or just playing in the garden with them in, in the dark so they're just getting used to it because the pups that I've got coming through now will have been born in sort of February, March time. They haven't had the dark yet. They haven't had a winter. So it's it's important that they get desensitised to the whole point of winter and the dark and, and all of that sort of stuff because it's going to come a point where they're being walked in the morning in the dark and they're being walked in the evening in the dark and if suddenly that that goes from being in the light to the dark with no sort of transition into it it can be quite daunting for them mm -hmm. so if we've done all those <coughs> so we've, we've chatted about to get them ready but then on the night they're not responding well and they are really starting to get upset by it what should we do I'd stick with what Emma says, keeping it a non-event as much as possible. So you want to be as calm as you can. You're going to be distressed if you see your animal distressed. But you've got to like self-talk yourself. As a human, we can do this. And keep ourselves as calm as possible. And don't ignore them. So some I have heard in the past people say, if your dog's afraid and it's coming up and seeking attention, ignore it. Don't give it any attention because you'll just reinforce it. But you can't reinforce their fear. You can't reinforce an emotion like that. You don't want to be afraid with them and go, oh, baby, don't worry, it's going to be okay, and give them lots of extra fuss, but just treat them like you normally would. I, I think that they do well with comfort in the same way as a, as a scared child, they sometimes just need you to rub their back. So I would say, but if they don't want to touch them, don't touch them. <laughs> go read what your dog says. Show the windows, show the curtains as well. There's another thing I've been with people and they leave the curtains open because they quite like seeing the odd purple sparkle in the sky, but that's not helpful and also shutting the curtains can muffle the, sm the s sound a little bit as well as the sight and just put telly on or radio on so the noises outside are less conspicuous. The only thing that I would perhaps add, I don't know if you can hear me, my phone's gone a bit funny, is I think we mentioned putting the TV and the radio on but I'd actually turn them up higher yeah. so actually that drowns out some more of the noise outside. I try and leave all the light, leave all the lights on as well. So leave yeah. the main light on and all lamps and stuff like that. So that it's very light inside. So it's not this big kind of contrast of flashing and dark and flashing and dark all the time. They won't necessarily, if your curtains are shut and your lights are on, they don't necessarily notice the flashing lights of it as such. And then hopefully it'll just be a vibration and, and then pitch issue that's throwing them. But you can get things like thunder shirts. They do work really well. I've known dogs wear them and it has it's not completely cured it but it's taken the edge off of a dog that would be literally trembling and terrified to a to a state where they can at least lie down hidden somewhere and then coverings on crates and stuff like that or coverings on in in bed areas and things like that so they've got like a little bend to go and hide in but like jace said it, you're not reinforcing a fear if you reassure your dog or hug your or cuddle your dog if that's something that they're used to by all means, let them come up for a cuddle in the evenings and stuff. If they're if they are getting scared, it, it won't. It's not you turning around and going, "I'm reinforcing that fear," and they're going to have that forever. That's exactly spot on. I'm fine with fireworks now, but it did take a couple of years. <coughs> and I wrote down a list of all the things that people could possibly try because I've tried them all, <laughs> and some worked and some didn't. But for one dog, it might work. Just because it didn't work for Indy doesn't mean it wouldn't work for another dog. So the list of things I wrote down was the sound therapy discs, which were played constantly, morning, noon and night. The phone app, so when I was out walking her MZ in the evening when it was getting dusk, playing the sounds on my phone whilst walking. I actually did two Tellington T-Touch courses, 
as well. Indy wasn't a fan of it, personally. She's not a touchy-feely dog. However, she did two of the motions. One was the ear slide and one of the body touches. But anything too hands-on, she's not a fan of anyway. Um, I have got a thunder vest, but I also learned how to use a bandage to do a body wrap. And the body wrap I actually found more effective than the vest on her because it's on very specific pressure points. So it's something that's worth learning about. I also went and did a course on bats, the bat flower remedies as well. So it's a bit like using rescue remedy for dogs, but they are just individual oils and bat remedy ones. And I went on the course with my dog and the dog chooses the oil that suits them. That was quite fascinating. She wanted to eat one of them. And that was the one that I used with her on the fireworks night. But the, the thing is, when you're using so many multiple things, you're not quite sure which one, was it the full package that got you there? Or was one particular thing more useful than the other? And I think it will be different for every dog. And I found that doing that for a couple of years. And now I play with her with a tennis ball in the garden while fireworks are going off. So it can be done, but I'm not saying it can be done with every dog, but it's certainly not easy. But bear in mind, all those lists of things that I put into the program, that's a lot of work. So I think it depends how much people want to put into it. I went for the BATS remedy, but some people use aromatherapy, essential oils, um, homeopathic ones. I just went with the back flower rescue ones. But they're just ideas for people to look into. Yeah, they mentioned about using a sedative drug. I can't remember which one it was, but I thought, my, from a behaviourist, I was like, hang on, but won't they be bad? Because if they yeah. do and I hate using sedatives for fear-based stuff because... If you've ever been sedated yourself, you are very yes. aware of what's going on around you. Absolutely. But you cannot That's what do I was anything thinking. about it. And I think for a fearful, if you know that the behavior is coming out because it's fear, the worst thing you can do is completely trap your dog in its own body while there's, yeah. while it's being, while it's in a fearful state. From, yeah, from a knowing how sedation actually chemically affects the brain and knowing how yeah. I feel myself when I'm, if, if, when I've had sedation. I don't think I would want to do I agree. so yeah no that would not be something I would ever really recommend I was only going to say if somebody wanted to try a thunder shirt and hadn't got one the tight sort of drying coats work well we use it on our my housemate's dog and that seems to help him when he's stressed about noises and he also has CBD which I don't know how you guys feel about but it helps him when he's stressed or anxious about stuff so is that CBD can be used for dogs Oh, that's interesting to know. CBD is t totally different. We're, we're talking about actual medical medical station where they go to where they go to the vets and they're sedated and then they come home again in that sedated state, well, which also is really really dangerous as well because if you've got a dog in a sedated state, everything drops, heart rate, rest rates, everything like that. While they're also in that stress state and their whole body's fighting the sedation the whole way through, and we've had dogs go into kind of all sorts of difficult heart failures and all sorts of things like that in vet practices where they're being actually monitored by a, by a vet or a vet nurse and they've reacted to the sedation because they fought it so much. This is fireworks yeah. sedation where they sedated and they meant to stay in that state. Uh, yeah. You can get drugs for it as well like you, you can <clears throat> get all the anti-anxiety medications but some of the anti-anxiety medications that vets have prescribed in the past where I've known if you look into detail into what they are they're, they're essentially sedatives and we had uh, I'm thinking of one specific case and she developed loads of additional issues and in the end we took off all medication and actually she was better she was more afraid but it was like a legitimate we could figure out exactly what it was and she was really afraid of hot air balloons actually was one of her massive things and then she'd associated that just with being outside and it had got really bad and again I think a lot of it was because she was she ended up on anti-anxiety medication all the time. And I don't think it helped. I think it was a real vicious cycle. It's not the same as sedation, but again, I think yeah. it'll be long-term drug two, use. I can think of two that spring to mind that have a sedative effect, being skullcap and valerian. Yeah. Valerian. Yeah. 
People use, them together. Pen- People use them together usually. So obviously people should speak to their vet before using them surely they should but i think you can get them without yeah, i think you can get them yeah, you can get them without a vet prescription and you can um, also get medications that aren't for sedation for pain that have a sedative effect sedative effect like gabapentin for example if you've got a dog on a lot of pain a lot of gabapentin uh, my dog that has a sedative effect he's not afraid of fireworks it's not a problem but you just made me think about the fact that that could yeah. compromise them even more on firework night. Or if they have a lot of metacam because they've got hip dysplasia and that in high doses can be a little bit, it's not sensitive, but have a sort of a similar effect perhaps. I've got PTSD right from my first tumor, brain tumor operation because they found it on the one day and two days later they had me in and did a six hour off and then four hours Four days later, on Christmas Eve, they let me home. So within six days, my entire world had turned upside down, and it was horrific. And my PTSD would be triggered by, at the time, I was a fitness instructor, and for no reason whatsoever, I wasn't having a class when they found my tumour. I didn't have a fit, nothing to do with anything at all. I tried to go back to just Zumba just to get fit, and try to do things, and I would sweat out of my palms. I've never had it in anything else, right? And it was literally like my whole body would go into absolute meltdown when I would hear the music, and I couldn't work it out. And the psychologist said to me, what's happened is because you were teaching Zumba around the same time they found the tumour, your brain has incorrectly connected two things together. Even though they had nothing to do with each other, they connected, now one triggers the other. And I'm always fascinated. People think things happen to have to happen together at the same time, but they don't. They just need to have some reasoning why your mind is putting them together. And that's the thing. Dogs can have incorrect association with different triggers, which make it obviously very difficult for the owners to figure out the triggers and obviously really difficult for behaviorists to figure out the triggers. You also then couple in sedation. You would have no idea really what those triggers are because the dog can't actually physically show you. So I suppose if you have got a dog that is absolutely terrified, you do want to try anything and everything to get them through it because you don't want to see any, but any dog suffer. What we're saying is proactive if you've got time from literally Jay from birth, using the time to make sure you're getting, getting your dog used to the sounds. If you've got a dog coming from a breeder, ask the breeder to get them used to the sounds. So they've got it there when mum is there using the apps, taking them out in the night, making sure that you give them as much exposure as you can at a sensible level to what they're going to come into contact with. So going forward, we're talking about being proactive rather than reactive, but that when we need to be reactive, we look at all the different options available. Is that right? Yeah. Fabulous. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed that. It's a short video from our lovely featured experts. If you want to see more of the featured experts, you can find them in the Ladies Working Dog Group on Facebook. They all have their own websites. I'm going to put the links below so that you can find them on those. And thank you, ladies. And hopefully next month we'll cover another topic. Speak to you all soon. That's it for today's episode. A massive thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to head over to the LWDG and sign up for our membership. Get access to expert-led training, a wonderfully supportive community, and the resources you need to become a confident and skilled gun dog trainer. Let's take this journey together, because no woman should have to train her gun dog alone. We'll see you all next week.